Happy Knitters! Thank you so much for watching my second Wise Owl Knits Fibercast. My name is Cheryl Beckridge and I'm a knitwear designer. I knit, I sew, I do a bit of quilting, and I will talk about all of my fibery pursuits on this Fibercast. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my fiber casts because I know you have lots of opportunities to watch many different things so I appreciate you being here. Today I'm wearing, today it's cold out, it's been 80 here in Indianapolis and now we're back to the freezing temperatures again so today I'm wearing my cable swancho. One of the patterns that I designed, I'll stand up here so maybe you can see it a little bit better, it's not, it's not cropped but it's not super long either. Um, it is a swan show, so a poncho with arms, and it's knit like a raglan, but turned 45 degrees. So the increases are made along the front and the back, and then along each arm. But just like a raglan, you increase at each point every other round, and it gets bigger and bigger. On a sweater you would stop right under the sleeves but because I wanted this to be a swancho and be a little bit bigger and flowier went down a little further and then we have really short sleeves so again this is the cable swancho it is knit with skein Southlander um, in the bulky but um, one of my testers Tabitha did it in DK and that worked great too. So this is nice and warm in the bulky and um, it'd be a little bit lighter and drapier if you use the DK. You can also use Cascade 220 um, or any worsted or iron weight yarn would probably work. Um, because it's bigger and flowier, you can, even if you're not getting the exact gauge, it probably will work. You can just keep going until it's as big as you like or knit a different size depending on what gauge you get. Here is what I am making. The first thing that I'm making wow, is the Lookout Tree and Animal Sampler, which is a quilt that I've been working on for my niece and her husband. I have a new baby coming and their nursery is or decorated in woodland animals. So I saw this quilt and I thought it would be the perfect little thing. And I'm so happy with how it turned out. The animals are so cute. I kind of want one my own. My husband wants one too. So maybe we'll make a bigger version for us. So that, the quilt top is made. I have to quilt it. Uh, I've got the backing cut out. I need to get the batting cut out. And I'm not sure if I'm going to try and quilt it myself and maybe just do some straight lines on either side of the seams or if I'm going to take it in and have it professionally quilted. Um, that's what I usually do is take it in and have it professionally quilted because I'm just always so happy with how they turn out that way. Um, so we'll see. I still have to make a decision on that. Second thing that I'm working on, and I don't think I've done any since last week, but I'll just show it again. My God's Promise socks that are from Anna Knitter's pattern, and they are knit in opal sock yarn in the Cats and Dogs collection, and mine is the, whatever the green is called, and I'm not sure what the, the colorway name is, but love green, so... I'm really happy with these. They are going to be a present, a Christmas present, so I've got some time to work on them. And socks are usually something that I work on when I'm traveling or if I have to go somewhere where I don't have a lot of extra space because um, they're easy to take along and you don't have to worry about packing a lot. You've just got a simple lightweight thing that is easy to pull out whenever you've got a free moment. So that is the God's Promise socks. I've got to work on those a little bit this week. The second thing I have, 
I've done a couple of rounds, but not a whole heck of a lot. And these, let's see if I can get this. This bag I got from Susan Smith of Delightful Works. She's on Etsy. I got this at the Nitty McPurley Retreat. Maybe it works better if I hold it up. But it's cotton. So it's pictures of cotton and the fabric is cotton. Nice bucket bags, got nice pockets on the inside. So again, that's from Susan Smith at Delightful Works and she's on Etsy. And I will link to everything I mentioned in my show notes that um, I'll put a link on YouTube and Rumble so you can click over to those easily. But they're also on my website at wiseownits.com and just look for the word blog and they're under the blog. So this Bybri hat is another one of my patterns and it's knit using Skeins Pulse as the dominant color and a blue that I had in stash for the background color. So on this two color brioche, if you look at it from the other side, the colors are switched. So it's kind of a reversible type hat and the way the, the top decreases work, it really can be worn either way or you could make it long enough that you could fold up a brim. So that is the Bybri hat. the cute bag by Delightful Works. It's really dark in this room so I don't know why my camera is, uh, I think my camera is trying to bring in light. I'll have to, one of those things I still need to figure out. Okay, now for some reason I decided to cast on a new project that's not from one of my own designs and I really have a lot to do so I'm not sure why I did it but it just looked fun and I think it's a project that will go really fast so I'm excited that I'm doing it. I am participating in Devon's Nitty McPurley's Faux Set Along 2023 and I have just started. So top down color work sweater. And it's got bobbles. I've just completed the first round of bobbles and I think there are only two rounds of bobbles in the sweater. But um, I decided, and I haven't done this on bobbles for a while, I'm not sure why, um, the bobbles have the first row you increase into one stitch to make it five stitches and then you flip it over, purl back, and then you decrease again in the, the last knit row of the bobble. So I decided to purl backwards or to knit backwards rather than purling so I didn't have to flip my work back and forth over and over again. I did make a really quick video of how to do that and I'm going to insert that here. Hi, I am going to do a quick video today just to show you how to make a bobble. Um, and in this particular method, we're using knitting backwards rather than doing a purl row. So the first step in making the bobble is to knit into the stitch on the left hand needle, pull it through, but you leave the loop on the left needle. We do a yarn over, knit into it again. So now we're at three, then we yarn over again, that makes four. And then finally we knit into the loop the third time and this time we slip it off. Now we are going to, rather than purling back, which you can certainly do, you turn your work and you purl those five stitches back, we're going to knit backwards instead. So we take the left hand needle and we insert it behind the right hand needle, wrap the yarn around. With the right needle, we pull that loop up and over. One stitch knitted backwards. There's a, a second stitch. Again, we insert the left needle behind the right needle, 
wrap it around over the top, take the right needle, pull the loop over, and here we are on the last stitch again. Insert it behind, wrap it around, take the right hand needle to pull the loop up and over. Five stitches that would have been purled are instead knit backwards. The last step in the bobble is to knit the first two stitches together, place that back on the left needle, and then we pass the other three stitches over the knit two together stitch. Once they're all over, we slip that loop back to the right needle. Bobble is made. So just a little tip of knitting backwards rather than purling to prevent lots of flipping back and forth while you're making your bobbles. Thanks for watching. That here. Okay, that is how you knit backwards and that works great on bobbles. It also works really good on entrelock. That's where I learned it first because again, short little rows that you have to flip back and forth over and over again. It um, saves you a lot of time if you can learn to knit backwards. And I, I'm a English style knitter, so I did it English. I haven't tried to do it continental. I think that would be awkward for me but I'm sure if you're a continental knitter, you can figure out how to do that too. Okay, so that is my faux set. And um, we'll see how far I get on that the next time. The yarn that I'm using for the faux set is some yarn, some DK weight yarn that is also from Skeins that I've had in stash. It doesn't really have a name on it. Um, because it was a limited edition, but I'm using three colors. It'll be very blue. So this cream color is the main color. Color one is the lighter blue, and color three is the aqua. Hopefully it looks good. I think it will. I'm pretty happy with my choice, and I'm using some yarn from Stash, so that's always a good thing. For finished items this week, I've got a couple of hats that I finished earlier in the year and then a, a Christmas stocking that I made as a gift. So, the first hat is the Solomon's Trellis hat. Again, a Wise Owl Knits design. And it is knit in Southlander Bulky in their cream colorway. The pom-pom is real fur, and it is from Sage Valley Handmade, and I have it tied on underneath so I can put it on this hat or move it to another hat if I decide to, but I think it's going to live here for just a little while. So the Solomon's Trellis hat is an adaptation of a cable that I got in Nora Gon's latest cable book. It's called the X Cable. And I've been playing around with this cable quite a lot lately. So you'll see it in this hat. You'll see it in my upcoming poncho design. And in the next hat that I'm going to show you, which is the Solomon's Knot hat. And this hat is knit in Cascade 220. And it uses the X cable too, but it does not have as much space in between it as the Solomon's trestle hat. So you've added some longer cables in between in the Solomon's trestle, and the cables are just offset in the Solomon knot hat. Again, Cascade 220, the color I used on this one was bright red. And the, um, the pom-pom is also tied on. This one is, um, is a faux fur hat, or a faux fur cable. 
Oh, a foe for her pom pom. And, uh, but it's still very cute. Not quite as large. I really kind of prefer the large pom poms. And they stay in place really good when you have the hat on, but they flop around a little when there's not a head inside of the hat. So those two items I've completed earlier this year. Like I said, I've got a lot of stuff that I have completed, but I didn't just complete it. So those, the amount of finished items I'm sure is going to slow down as time goes on. The next thing this is a Christmas stocking, and it's for the same baby that <laughs> the quilt is for. So this is for baby G, and I've got to add the name to it and sew a lining in, and then this will be ready to head back to Texas for the new parents and the new baby. I've got quite a few Christmas stockings on my webpage. This is my favorite one, and this is the one that I always do for family members that have new babies. So it's the um, Colorwork Sampler Christmas stocking. And sometimes I'll flip around, like I might put, put the deer down here and put the trees there, or do things in different order. But I usually use these same patterns, these same five choices, and just maybe rearrange the order. And I'll, you know, flip the color of the toes and the heels and, you know, maybe start with something different up here. I don't always start with green and then do red. Sometimes I do blue and white. Um, just kind of what I feel like at the time. And I try, if I'm making them for different people, in the same family. I don't want to have any two of them the same. So I try and keep track of each one so I'm not uh, not not duplicating within families. Occasionally I've had to call the mom and say, hey, could you take a picture of the stockings that you have so that I don't do the next one exactly the same. So anyway, the Colorwork Sampler Christmas Stocking. This is in some DK from Skeins, or um, you can also use Cascade 220. That's what I use most of the time is Cascade 220. The Colorwork Sampler Christmas Stocking. All done, almost. The designs that I'm working on right now are unfortunately the same as Fibercast number one, but that's all right. Good things take time. The first thing I'm working on is my cable poncho with um, a collar. And that is using, again, the X-knot cable. A, uh, it's got a braid here on both sides. And then an interlacing cable on the ends. So I've got three more repeats and then the ribbing to finish on the main poncho. And then I've also got to do, I'm gonna do a collar that will be a ribbed collar that um, will surround this neckline. So got that to do yet. It's going to have buttons that will be faux buttons, but it'll look like it'll button up and button down. I don't think that's really needed for, for function on a poncho, but it does look nice. So working on that. I've also got the Trinitrio sweater pullover color work, and that is a top down color work knit in DK weight. It does have some color work at the bottom also. That I am supposed to get back from the tech editor the end of this week. So once I get that back, then I will put out the call for testers on that. The last thing I'm working on, I had hoped to cast on before this fiber cast, but I 
podcast on the faux set instead. So um, that will be coming soon, and that's going to be a fingering weight color work um, pullover. And I do have, I did get a little more done on my drawings and my charts, but um, but I haven't cast anything on yet. So nothing really to show you on that. My last section today is going to just be some funny knitting airport stories or just funny knitting stories. They, I guess they don't all take place in the airport. One at least takes place in church. Um, last week on the first fiber cast, I mentioned I was knitting in the airplane and I knit the whole way and there was a guy sitting in the row behind us that just talked the entire time and his poor seatmates hardly got a word in edgewise because the guy was just talking the whole time. Um, when we got up to leave to leave the airport he he stood up like right away one of those people that pops out in the aisle and he's you know halfway back so he wasn't going to get out for a while anyway he just was I guess hogging the space but anyway he looks over at me and he's like what are you doing knitting and I said yeah he goes does anybody still do that and I said all the cool people knit which is the truth um, so I started thinking that probably other people had funny airport stories too. So I'm going to just read a few to you. On a Monday morning, I was getting ready to fly home and sitting in the airport terminal waiting to board. I had my project out, working it in my lap when an old woman sat down next to me, um, probably somewhere in her 70s. I don't think that's that old, but... This person must be younger. She took a look at me, and then she pulled her tablet out and started playing Candy Crush. Then I stopped a minute and did a double take, noticing that a couple of people were looking, and then I realized, I'm 21, knitting a mitten, the woman sitting next to me is old enough to be my grandmother, and she's on the internet playing a, a video game. I don't know if that's really funny, but it sure was ironic. The next one, this is a church one, and this is cute. In church, the other day on Sunday, I dropped my ball of yarn, and it rolled under the pews towards the front. You know how they're usually angled down, so that's where it's going to roll. I had to tap the woman in front of me, and she had to tap the woman in front of her, and so on and so on. And then they had to hand it back under each pew to me. I really should have my yarn better contained. That can happen in a plane too, which is nice. why it's nice to knit socks and keep them in your knitting bag or keep the ball of yarn in your knitting bag. Sometimes they pop out. The next one is, I was sitting in the airport once on my way home from a stitches event and I had just taken a class on making Argyle socks and got about halfway through the first one. First one. An older woman came and sat a few feet over from me and pulled out her knitting and was super nice and we got to chatting. A few minutes later, two women who had also been at Stitches came over to the gate and whipped out their knitting. We were all having a lovely time chatting and talking about the yarn that we had bought. Then a man who was on the same flight went over and said, Is this a knitting convention? We politely told him. No, it ended yesterday. That's cute. Last year, my dear husband and I were on a honeymoon in Fiji, and I was laying out on the porch working on a scarf that I had bought. All the Fijian employees of the resort were going back and forth about their business, and a few of the younger men come up, came up to me and asked what I was doing. I told them I was knitting a scarf, and they were so excited and asked if they could touch it and how I learned. And they laughed so hard when I told them I learned on YouTube. It was really fun to see them so into it. I thought about it later and was like, well, it is never cold in Fiji. So they probably never saw anybody knitting. Thank you so much for watching. 
fiber cast number two. Um, I will be back again next week, hopefully with some finished objects and some more knitting and more of my designs and a heartwarming story. If you have any funny airport stories, please share them with me. I'd love to read them. Thanks so much. Happy knitting.